This is Mr. Marshall, his brother. Prosecutor Neil Marshall. We took it to commemorate our work together. Where's the sword in this? Where's the sword? What? There's a sword there, but not on this. Is this something that's gonna be brought up later? Perhaps. It's fine. Yo, 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 it's B Teen Screen coming at you. <laughs> coming at you. Yeah, I'm coming for your neck. For your kneecaps. Uh, yo, 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 it's B Teen Screen. How's everybody doing today? I'm doing fantastic. We're coming back here again with an episode of Phoenix Wright. We gotta do some investigation. Yes. Yo, 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 it's uh, Patchy. Also, doing while far. we're still like the first little bit of the episode. Thirsty as hell. Uh, interrupting B team as I talk. Yes. You guys have yep. a uh, calendar. You guys have just under just over a week to get the 30% off at my merch store. It ends on July 13th, month after we launched. So if you're gonna buy anything, go to my merch store, bteenscreen.store, and use code open30 for 30% off all my stuff if you're planning on buying anything. And it ends on the yeah. 13th. So be sure you don't miss it. Two days after my birthday. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to do like a birthday stream, Patchy? A birthday stream? Nah, I'm coming back in August. <laughs> no! I'll do a birthday stream on Discord. Oh, <laughs> uh, come on. Alright, fine then. February 24th, 312 p.m. Right and go law offices. I'm so sorry, Mr. Wright. I'm sorry for what my sister said. Drastic crimes require drastic measures. That's just the way it is. We did what we had to in order for him to get the verdict he deserved. We talking serial killers up in her. You mean up in her? No, up in here. <laughs> I didn't know. I never knew that the SL9 incident was just another name for the Joe Dark killings. Sounds like everyone's heard about these killings of me. Lana wanted Dark convicted so badly. That's why she used me. That's why she used what happened to me. What do you mean, what happened to you? It's all there in the file. Joe Dark's last victim was Prosecutor Neil Marshall. When he murdered Officer Marshall's brother, he left behind an incriminating piece of evidence. But what did you have to do with these killings, Emma? Your mom. On the night Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered, Joe Dark tried to kill me. Oh. What? He tried to kill you? Officer Marshall's brother, Neil, was only trying to save me. So that that's you. you. Yes. I was a witness in the Joe Dark trial. I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> Uh, talky talk. Talky talk. The incident happened two years ago. It was right about this time of the year too. There was a terrible thunderstorm that day, unusual for the season. True, because English, whatever the heck Phoenix Wright is, uh, said set in uh, California. So California drought. It's like no crap thunderstorms in California is unusual cause drought. Anyways, I was alone in my sister's office. We were planning to eat dinner together once she finished her work. Then suddenly, this terrifying man came bursting into the office. Okay. Joe Dark. Actually, Joe Light, his twin brother. It seemed like he was running from someone. He pulled out a knife and screamed at me. That's not how twins work. 
twins have the same last name. That's what makes them twins. Unless they have a name change later on. Not in Danganronpa, but that's spoilers for anyone who hasn't played Danganronpa. Anyways, I didn't know what was going on. Just then, Prosecutor Marshall showed up. Big Marshall's brother. Joe Dark tried to take me hostage. But before he could, Mr. Marshall tackled him. Then... What happened? I I'll never forget it. Okay, then just tell me. Lightning struck and the lights went out. Suddenly... Suddenly... A bolt of lightning flashed outside the window, lighting up the office for an instant. What I saw then burned a permanent picture in my mind. I... I can still see it now. Okay. After the incident. I don't remember the moment when Dark stabbed Mr. Marshall. So you weren't able to testify about that? No, I was only asked about when I was attacked. That must be why Lana... Why she made up the crime. Made it up? You mean provided bogus evidence? The prosecutor's office wanted that guilty verdict so badly. Lana forced the evidence and Mr. Edgeworth used it. Edgeworth? Yes? But I'm sure he didn't know anything about it. He couldn't have known he was being given false evidence. Even so, that's when it all started. The rumors about Mr. Edgeworth, I mean. It's all my fault. I could have just testified properly, none of this would have happened. Yeah, you useless person. So it's true, even though he may not have known it. Edgeworth really was involved in falsifying evidence. After that case ended, Lana was never the same. Fair. She became cold, like she is today. And has to wear a blanket all over the place. She must not have been able to face up to what she did. Especially not to Emma. Alright, what's the permanent image? What did you see in the incident that crime occurred? Dark knocked down Mr. Marshall and raised his knife. No Marshall was stabbed right in front of this poor girl. At a ripe age of 14. I don't remember what happened after that. Apparently I passed out. When I came to, Lana was cradling me in her arms. Poor Emma. You know what? You've been through so much. I, I couldn't bring myself to testify about that instant. Instant? Incident. Instant? Something. I tried, but the words just wouldn't come out. I drew a picture, but it wasn't any good. Two years ago, you must have been 14. That's understandable. Once it was all over, I made up my mind. I decided that when I grew up, I'd become a scientific investigator. I want to be able to fight crime with my testimonies. And find the evidence to make an airtight case. That way, Lana would never have to forge any. I see. I think I'm finally starting to understand what makes Emma tick. But there's still something that bothers me about that crime. Um... Alright, sorry, I need to read something. The scenes with B Teen and uh, Tachi, the dinosaur. Yeah. Uh, so, pretty much, she has an obvious reason to become what she wants to become. Meanwhile, you know, with Phoenix, it's like, my friends defend me, so I want to defend other people. Uh huh. <laughs> what else? <laughs> He says it's just like the worst. There's something that's puzzling me, Emma. What is it? 
You said you were in Lana's office at that time, right? That's right. Why then would a serial killer come running into in there? Not only that, but he was being chased by a prosecutor. Oh, there's no mystery there. Joe Dark had been taken in for questioning that day. Taken in for questioning? You mean by the police? Of course. This happened at the police department. He tried to run away halfway through the interview and fled into my sister's office. Why didn't he run all the way over to your sister's office? Because the detective offices in the questioning room are right across from the elevator. Across from the elevator? Solana was the chief prosecutor, wasn't she? No, silly. Didn't I tell you? Two years ago, Lana was a detective. She was the best in the entire force. What? That's news to me. I mean, we only After met the her Joe two days Dark ago. Case. What? <laughs> we only met Lana two days ago. So, like, it's True. an obvious surprise. She was transferred to the prosecutor's office and made chief prosecutor. Lana used to be a detective? We're going to have another talk with her. International Super Spy. Uh, yeah, go to the detention center. Detention center. Super Spy! Yeah! Super Detective! February 24th, detention center, visitor's room. Okay, hold on. I need. I, I, I said it. I said. Okay! I, said it. Yeah, I have to type stuff. Oh, uh, okay. But... Lana! Lana! What are you typing, sir? Are phone. you doing homework right now? No, I... He's uh, doing homework right now. Technically, homework for YouTube. <laughs> oh, okay. Mr. Wright, seems I keep causing you trouble. Falsifying evidence. I didn't think you were the type. Criminals don't mind playing foul. Why should we? But Lana, if you're wrong, this person might be found guilty. That's how every single case of ours has gone so far. <laughs> you wish. Believe me, I understand the risks. Lana, Emma told me about you. Oh? And how you were a detective two years ago. And how the SL9 incident was the reason for your transfer to the prosecutor's office. That's right. Could you fill me on, in on the details? Especially what about that unusual change of job. I suppose you have a right to know, Mr. Wright. Yeah, a right to know. Ha 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 Today's trial. A lot of revelations <laughs> were uncovered at the trial today. Not the least of which was the fact that this case is largely connected to another one two years ago. Evidence from that case was stolen as well though I expected as much. I know how obsessive Officer Marshall can be. That trial, it really wasn't fair, was it? I believed in you, Lana. How many times have we heard her say that? Well, she's heartbroken. She's heartbroken every time she goes to see her. Yeah. I swear. Because she's learning things about her sister that she didn't know before. I believe that no matter what happened, you'd always stick to the truth. Nah. It couldn't be helped, Emma. At the trial two years ago, I sold my soul. Well, all drama aside, the fact of the matter is, at 515, there was no murder in the police department. Tell me it's not true, Lana. What the witness, Miss Starr, said. About you stabbing Mr. Goodman with a knife. <laughs> Lana, I don't understand. Why won't you tell us? <laughs> Emma, this doesn't involve just me. I don't think I have ever seen Lana look so phased before. Detective Lana Sky. It's true. I was a member of the police force two years ago. 
She was amazing. They still talk about all the cases she and Chief Gant cracked together. So it's a Hylian and a Goron. <laughs> I'm keeping him as a Goron. Goron Gant? He was the deputy chief of police back then, but he still worked the crime scenes. Damon Gant. Goron Gant. He was everything I aspired to be. They were the best team ever! They solved crimes before the reports could even be filed! I'm not really idolizing their big sister. But now you're a chief prosecutor. What happened? I always planned on becoming the prosecutor. The reason I became a detective was... To gain experience investigating crime scenes so you could use that experience in court, right? <laughs> Goron Gant's help in the SL9 case was crucial to its resolution. After that, he became chief of police and arranged my transfer to the prosecutor's office. Maybe I should ask more about the investigation of the two years ago. Dark investigation. <laughs> A few years ago, I was second in command of the detectives investigating Dark. Second in command? That means the investigation lead was Damon Gant, right? Yes, Deputy Chief Gant and I shared the same office and the same investigations. Oh, they shared the same office, huh? We even have the same office. We led a team of the best detectives on the force. Detective Goodman, whose case it was, Jake Marshall, and Angel Starr. It was the first time Marshall worked with his brother. He was quite gung-ho. Without a doubt, Joe Dark was a serial killer. We asked him to come in for questioning. We were desperate for evidence. That was when his final murder took place. When he tried to murder Emma. Prosecutor Marshall was trying to save me from Dark. You see, the first person who happened upon the scene of the crime was me. Now you tell us. First one I've seen. Goron Gand and Neil Marshall were the ones questioning Dark that day. The investigation was in its final stages and Dark must have suddenly panicked. So we waited until Gant and Marshall let their guards down, then fled the room. From there, he ran straight to the office shared by Deputy Chief Goron Gant and myself. That's where he found me. So you were the first person to run to the scene, Lana? That's what I just said, you dumbass bitch. I was finding some papers while... Goron, Gant, and Marshall were questioning Dark. <laughs> when I returned to my office, I saw three bodies on the floor and smelled blood. Three bodies? Rescue room, Marshall, the victim, Emma, who had passed up. And the suspect, Joe Dark. During the struggle, it seems Mr. Marshall struck a final blow before he died. Joe Dark had incurred a minor concussion and lay unconscious. What did he do? To be honest, I panicked. I picked up Emma, carried her out of the room, just held her. Can't blame her after all her sister must have gone through. After that, I placed Dark under immediate arrest. Let me get this straight. You are all involved in the SL9 incident. That's right. Quite a coincidence, hmm? I don't buy it. What are you saying? There's no way everyone involved in this trial was also involved in that incident. Just by chance. But that case was solved two years ago! At least one person went to extremes because they didn't believe it was truly solved. Officer Marshall. Yes, his actions came as a surprise to me as well. Ever since his brother died, he's changed completely. 
I guess he wasn't convinced with the ruling against Joe Dark. Life doesn't end with the closing of a case. Everyone has to live the rest of their lives with their memories. That case just might not be over yet. Mm hmm? Emma was assaulted by Dark at the police department, right? Yes, in the office that Damon Gant and I shared. The office that Mr. Gant now occupies by himself. The Chief's office. Maybe we should have a look at, at the Chief's office. Decide if it was final SL9 where. Yeah, right. you get to go to criminal affairs. Yeah. February 24, police station, criminal affairs department. I don't see any detective going to anywhere. Things seem kind of quiet around here today. You're right. The chief and detective seem the same, though. Why don't we go look for some other people to talk to? Right. We can come back here later. Um, move to the police department. February 24th, police department. Entrance. Howdy, Bambina. Oh, Mr. Marshall! <laughs> I never thought things would turn out this way when I woke up this morning. Yes, said I, said I. You never know where life will lead you, eh, Bambina? I should have known my lunk had run out when old Billy dried up this morning. Billy? His cactus. Must be his cactus! <laughs> so where are you headed? Just over to the prosecutor's office for a little interrogation. It's a voluntary appearance, but we all know I won't be coming back. Sorry, but you can't go in the evidence room today, partner. But Mr. Marshall, why did you do it? Why do prospectors head west? If ever there was a case I needed to know the truth about, it was that one. Before you turn yourself in, Mr. Marshall, would you mind telling us exactly what happened? Hmm. Yeah. Looks like I won't be getting a steak lunch today. Yay, talk. Something was fishy about that trial from the beginning. It wasn't just me either. All the detectives thought so. What do you mean, fishy? Some of the facts reported were inconsistent with the evidence we found. For example, the murder weapon. Murder weapon? You mean uh, the switchblade knife with the broken tip? That was Joe Dark's, all right. But in the initial autopsy report, a question was raised. A question? Yeah. The blade of the knife was not a perfect match with the wound this wick the victim sustained. What does that mean? It means there's a good chance that knife was not the murder weapon. However, in the report that was finally submitted, that possibility had been erased. So the facts have been concealed with forged evidence? That case left behind scars on all of us. The scars that the SL9 incident left behind! I got the looks, but he got the brains. He was one of the best prosecutors around. Uh, he looks better than you. Same! <laughs> I had just made detective when it went down. It was our first case together. And your last. How old was he? Your brother. He was 27 at the time. He was awarded the highest honor that very day. The highest honor? You mean, uh... King of Prosecutors. I knew it. What are you looking at me like that for? That's an honor for a prosecutor. Mr. Marshall must have really been close with his brother. The day that the SL9 incident took place, that wasn't the same day as... You know. That's right. It was the day of the evidence transferal. Interesting. It was drizzling that morning, and by nightfall, there was thunder. Can't believe two years have gone by already. 
I tried to steal the evidence so the case wouldn't die. Apparently someone tried to stop you. William Goodman was murdered, and the evidence locker was empty. There was something going on behind the scenes in that case. We all knew that later. Every detective involved in that investigation, save one, was taken care of. Miss Starr was fired and I was demoted and boxed away in a tiny room. What about Detective Goodman? If they did something to him too, the commissioners would get suspicious. No, they were careful enough not to be too obvious. They? Who are you talking about? Don't get upset, Bambina. I mean, Goron Gant and Lena Sky. Oh, Dr. Sky. The investigation lead, Goron Gant, and his second in command, Lana Sky. There wasn't a person on that force who hadn't heard of that duo. That case was the biggest step in both of their careers. After the case ended, Lana transferred to the prosecutor's office, right? Yeah. Damon Gant, the new chief of police, arranged for that to happen. She's never been the same since she left. Hmm? Everyone who knew her said so. Chief Prosecutor Sky was totally different when she was a detective. Now that you mentioned this, Emma said something like that too. Tell me, what happened to my sister? She died and got replaced with this clone. Sorry, Bambina, but her secret is too well guarded. I never found out. Our secret. It all started two years ago. So there you have it. That's my story. Did you enjoy it, partner? Yes, it was very fun. It was certainly enlightening. There's one thing for sure I found out in court today. That boy Edgeworth isn't my enemy. He was the one who used falsified evidence to get a guilty verdict. But someone else was the one who gave him that evidence and planned everything. That someone is Goron Gantz. Don't believe me? Well, I don't blame you. I won't even be a patrolman after today. Too bad I won't be around to work with you. When you become a real scientific investigator. Aww. Adios, Bambina. That's so nice. Now you can move to back to criminal affairs. February 24th, police station, criminal affairs department. This place is pretty empty, but today is dirt deserted. That must mean everyone's busy solving crimes. Oh, if you're looking for the others, they're all in the conference room. Well, that's not, but that's uh, not getting it. Oh, he actually talked to us. With the chief prosecutor saying what she did and the decision about what to do? About Mr. Edgeworth, not to mention our statement to the media in tomorrow's trial. There's more chaos going on than Thanksgiving and Christmas put together. I think festive is the word usually used for those. Um, sir? We'd like to have a look around Chief Gant's office. Just use the connecting hallway to the other building and take the elevator to the top floor. Really? You mean it's okay for us to go in there? I mean, we aren't police officers or anything. Hey, you're right. You can't go in there. It's off limits. Now I see where the Dev Young should get some unique charm. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's head to the Chief's office. Alright, sure. <laughs> what the? Why does this dude have an organ? Right? February 24th, Police Department Chief's Office. Whoa, where am I? In the Chief's Office, silly. At least that's what it said on the door. Where are the pipe organ? That's real, isn't it? Hey, I used to take organ lessons in kindergarten. Please, 
Please no. Please no. They used to call me Little Miss Bach. Why? I thought I was a genius until they tried teaching me notes. I never could remember where C was. You'll learn when you're older. Hmm? <laughs> oh, it's you two. She got. Oh, yeah. He put that paper he was reading in his desk. So, Rido, have you been swimming lately? Uh, no, I haven't. I've been kind of busy lately. Plus, it's really cold outside, and I don't really feel like swimming. I can appreciate that. I've had my hands full, too, with Mr. Marshall's misconduct. And Lana's provocative statement. Provocative statement? Oh, you mean about the forged diamond? Two years have passed since that incident. My, how time flies. See that big picture on that wall over there? Robo Knight. That's a picture of Lana, Neil, and me. So this is Mr. Marshall's brother, Prosecutor Neil Marshall. We took it to commemorate our work together. Where's the sword in this? Where's the sword? What? There's a sword there, but not on this. Is this something that's going to be brought up later? Perhaps. Okay. Something's not right with that picture. Can't quite seem to put my finger on it, though. Yeah, team picture adds to core record. Still hey, Dill's online. Anyway, I'd like to reminisce all day, but there are matters that need my attention. I'm going to lock up here, so let's go out together. Oh. But this office, it was a crime scene two years ago, wasn't it? That case has long since been over. There's no need to investigate it anymore. Well, the same we'd like to still have a look around. Perhaps you didn't hear me. I said there's no need to investigate it anymore. Now hurry up and get out. I have a meeting to attend. Looks like we aren't welcome. It seems that Chase isn't over yet with yet, after all. Do you know how to pick locks? What do you mean? Chief John denied our request to search the crime scene. That means there must be a reason he doesn't want us looking around in there. You mean like a clue? There's gotta be a way we can get inside the chief's office. Uh, you can move to the criminal affairs department again. Okay. River 24 Police Station Criminal Affairs Department. Hey, pal! Hmm. Lieutenant Gumshoe, are you supposed to be in a meeting? I'm, uh, just taking a breather. My feet hurt. Don't you sit down in meetings? <laughs> From sitting so long? <laughs> Actually... From serving everyone coffee. He's the coffee boy! <laughs> Sounds like they have gum cheese still out of the loop. Hey, say, have either of you seen Mr. Edgeworth? Edgeworth? No. Why do you ask? He's under fire from both the police department and the prosecutor's office. It's almost like the battles between you two in court. That sounds so serious. Is it because of what my sister said? That's basically what it all boils down to. That falsified evidence two years ago. Now Mr. Edgeworth has a whole world after his blood. Yikes. Right. You can talk. Yeah. Well, why would Edgeworth be blamed? It's not like he knew the evidence was forged. Well, that's why he's guilty part of you here, isn't he? Mm. Regardless, 
Regardless, the prosecutor is responsible for the evidence they present in court. Not only that, but as you know, there's been a lot of rumors going around about Mr. Edgeworth. His amazing talent as a prosecutor has kept him safe from those who don't like him. But now, with this... Are there really so many people who hate him? Yeah. In our world, only those with talent rise to the top. Mr. Edgeworth not only has that, but he's young. There's no better recipe I know of for making enemies. Hey, Dick, keep up the good work. Yes, sir. Wait, his name is Richard Gumshoe? No, his name's Dick Gumshoe. But Dick is a short form for Richard. Nah, his name's Dick. I see why Edgeworth likes him. Shut up. <laughs> Let's go out for lunch again sometime. My treat. Uh, yes, sir. You gotta take me back to that joint sometime, okay, Dick? Yes, sir. Seems you don't have any problems with enemies. Yeah, well, I'm careful not to stick out. Only around Edward. Anyway, I'm a bit worried about him. Under all this pressure, I'm afraid Mr. Edward just might crack. Actually, I took a look at the foul earlier while the coffee was brewing. He seems genuinely concerned for Edward. Well, did you find out anything? The only evidence Dark left behind was during his final attack. His final attack? You mean... When he killed Prosecutor Marshall, who was trying to protect some girl. Me. Seems weird, because don't you never realize that was a girl? <laughs> That's where he left the most incriminating evidence of all. Well, what is it? Oh, um, let's see. I think it has something to do with the murder weapon. Oh, I forget. Look, it's all written somewhere in here, okay? His power of recollection never fails to impress me. Maybe we should show him the murder weapon. Maybe. It might jog his memory. Sorry, reading oh, messages no, no. again, I'm sorry. <laughs> Joe Dark was 42 at the time of the crime. He was just your run-of-the-mill run businessman. The businessman? What made him take to serial killing? One day on his way home from work, he hit someone with his car. With his car? So it was an accident? An accident, yes, but it transformed into an animal. An animal? He killed a man that witnessed the accident. Then he killed a lady who saw the second crime. A kid walked by just then, so he killed him too. Then when he was burying the bodies, a jogger came upon the scene and was killed as well. Finally, he turned himself in. Damn, he seems a, a pretty careless animal. Of course, this was all conjecture. There wasn't a single shred of evidence. So he turned himself in. Yes, but in the middle of his questioning, he fled and murdered his vital victim. Prosecutor Marshall. That crime was witnessed by someone, too, but luckily Dark was arrested on the spot. It's a good thing that last witness wasn't killed. That last witness, aka Emma. Okay, show him. No. No, no, no. Oop. 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 There you go. Oh, yeah. oh no. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm about this. Hey, is that? It has a tag attached to the label SL9 incident on it. I believe this would be the broken murder weapon you were speaking of. What are you doing with that? Ever since that case was closed, that knife's been locked away in a locker. On the day Detective Gooden was murdered, this suddenly disappeared from the locker. 
and was found in Mr. Edgeworth's car muffler. Okay. That's it. Now I remember what that incriminating piece of evidence was. When you showed me that knife, it all came back to me. Well, what is it, Detective? Quick, before you forget again. This knife. It was Joe Dark's, wasn't it? That's right. We traced it back to the store he bought it at, plus it had his fingerprints on it, too. But no one actually witnessed him using it to murder anyone, right? That's where his luck ran out. When you take a good look at the knife, you'll see it's broken. You don't have to take a good look to notice that, Detective. Yeah, well, anyway. I can guess where the broken off tip of the knife was found. That's what did him in. Where was it? The victim, Neil Marshall, was carrying it inside his own body. It was found deep inside the stab wound. Did it match Dark's knife? You bet, down to the last fiber. That's pretty conclusive. Huh. Neil Small tells you report that to the court record. Switchblade knife updated in the court record. All right, sweet. Well, there you have it in a nutshell. That's all I know. Can I ask you one more thing? What is it? If it's money you need, you should ask Chief Gant. It's not money, but it does concern the chief. His office is a crime scene, right? The prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered. The chief's out now and his office is locked. But we'd like to have a look around if that's okay. Well, any detective's ID card can unlock the door. What? Really? But if I let a civilian in there, I'd be charged with breach of trust. Breach of trust? Simply put, I'd be canned. Oh. Sorry, pal. I don't plan on getting fired because of you. How about, How about ID? this ID card? It was Detective Goodman's. That won't work either. The data was deleted the day he died. Oh. In other words, Gump 2 is our only chance of getting into that office. I wonder if there's something we could show him that would make him change his mind. Okay, let's see. Let's present. You have nothing to present. This guy almost made us lose the case today. What are you talking about? He was guarding the bloodstain on that evidence locker with his life. That's more than you can say about most officers nowadays. It would have saved us a lot of trouble if he hadn't guarded it so well. I have to admit, he's right though. Thanks to the blue badger, we were able to prove another possibility today. The possibility that another murder took place prior to 515. So, are we able to Look. end the video here? We, uh, what time are you at? 45 minutes. Then let's go ahead. And end? Peace out from Beating Screen. Uh, see you guys next time. Bye. I think I did it. You have to have more emphasis on the bye bye. But other than spread that, yeah. some love into the world. Uh, it, yeah, spread spread love, guys. Spread love. And PSA. Canada needs more of it. What? <laughs> Canada has plenty of love. Peace. Bye bye.